everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beasts Stone Block 3 with another tutorial Let's Play video. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. Last episode, we built ourselves a melter and a smeltery, so we've got a method in our world for processing ores. We also came up with a way to create some lava in our world. I forgot to get that reward, so let's go click on that right now. We got a tape measure. That's actually kind of a cool little thing. This episode, though, I was originally going to work on the crushing wheel, but because the recipe is going to require a little bit of power and we've got all these other sort of create items in our world that could use a little bit of power, I thought this would be a good opportunity for us to actually jump over to the create tab and look at some of the little power options we've got. Now, we could do something as simple as a water wheel, but looking at the various options, we've actually got enough resources right now for us to do the steam engine. Basically, it's gonna take a bunch of copper, a little bit of andesite alloy, a little bit of golden sheet, so that's just uh, gold in our mechanical press over there. So that's basically what we're gonna be working on today. But before we get started, now would be a great time to click on that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, that way you're alerted every time I post a new video to my channel. Also, if you're enjoying this content and you want to support, click on the join button down below, check out all the perks I've got available for my community members, one of which is the supporter shout out, you can see those popping out throughout my videos. Alternately, you can check out my Patreon page, there's a link down below in the description. But enough about that, let's get back to the video. So like I said previously, our goal for this episode is to create a steam engine. To do that, we're going to need a couple of items, one of which is going to be a vanilla barrel. Now to make a vanilla barrel, it is six wood planks in a crafting table with two wood slabs. Also, we're going to need a couple of metal sheets. So we've done this one previously, but for demonstration's sake, what I'm going to do is make ourselves a copper sheet using our mechanical press. So we're going to go place that on the depot. We're going to go right click on the little uh, hand crank there there's our one sheet i'm going to do the same thing with the gold you can see i've got a loopy trap down there i gotta take care of them sometime in the future but for the gold sheet we're going to go do the exact same thing there we go we've got ourselves a gold sheet now using these items we're going to go back to our crafting table to craft ourselves some fluid tanks now we're going to need at least four fluid tanks to make a proper steam engine i'm actually going to double this recipe up and we're going to end up making eight and i went too quickly on that so to make a fluid tank in the crafting table it is going to be two copper sheets and one barrel now we're also going to need a proper steam engine so i'm going to take that gold sheet we made earlier put it in a crafting table with one andesite alloy and one block of copper that gets us one steam engine we're also going to need some fluid pipes now to make fluid pipes it is two copper sheets in a crafting table with one copper ingot again i'm going to double up on this recipe i don't think i'm going to need the extra ones but i'm going to build them just in case and then we're also going to need a method of moving the power around our system. To do that, we're going to need some cog wheels. We've built these ones previously, but to make a regular cog wheel, it is one shaft and one oak plank. I'm going to make six of them right now because we're going to need a whole bunch. And I'm actually going to take two more of these. I'm going to throw them back into our crafting table here so we can make ourselves a large cog wheel. Now, to make a large cog wheel, it is a regular cog wheel in a crafting table with another wood plank. In this case here, I'm going to make three of them. I'm not 100% sure how many of them I'm going to use, but because this is going to be one of my main sources of early power in this world, I'm definitely going to find an opportunity to use them. Now, we're also going to need a way to move water into our steam engine. To do that, we're going to need a mechanical pump. To make a mechanical pump, it is one fluid pipe and one cog wheel. Last but not least, we're going to need a heat source for the steam engine. We could use something as simple as like a campfire. I'm actually going to go with the lava method simply because I like dealing with lava. And lava is fairly simple to make in stone block three. We did it last episode, but once more to make lava, we're going to need a fire plow. To make a fire plow, it is two sticks at an angle in a crafting station. So that should be all of the craftable items we need to make the steam engine. One other thing that we're going to need to have access to in our world, though, is an infinite supply of water. So that's what I've got over here. I've got two source blocks with a space in between, which are constantly refreshing the middle source block. Now, since this is a steam engine, we are going to need a heat source. Like I said earlier, we're going to use lava for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fire plow. I'm going to right click, hold it, point it at one of the stone blocks. There you go. There's one block of lava. There's two blocks of lava, 
three blocks of lava and one more makes four that's perfect i'm gonna go take this cobblestone piece i'm gonna place it down here temporarily because we're gonna take the fluid tanks and we're gonna go one two three four and as you can see that turns it into a multi-block item now i made eight of these because i kind of want to double up on this so the cool thing that create does in this case is rather than having to place four more on top if i've got four in my inventory right click bingo bango it automatically builds the next layer for me which is really really cool now one thing to keep in mind while this fluid tank will actually store any fluid in the game right now once we convert it to a steam engine that ability is going to go away. So there's no point in pre-filling this up with water. The water that you put in there is not going to help you when you build your steam engine. So it's best just to leave this empty for now. We're going to take our steam engine though. We're going to go place it on the ground. This is now a proper steam engine. You can see the window has kind of been replaced on the side with a pressure gauge. That's going to be something that's going to be important as we get this up and running. But before we can get any actual power out of it, there's a few additional things we got to do. Now, right now the steam engine is missing a piston. To activate the piston, what we gotta do is take a shaft and place it two blocks in front of the steam engine. Now, be aware when you're placing the shaft down, the angle that you place the shaft will change the direction that the piston's actually gonna provide power. So this particular setup here, it's gonna spin around in a circle like that. The way we're gonna be setting up things today, I actually want the power to be going more like this more in a vertical rather than a horizontal circle now all we got left to do is move water into our tank so it can be converted into steam which will power the whole steam pump to do that what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a fluid pipe i'm going to place it in our source block of water i'm going to place another one on top of that and then we're going to go break the bottom one that way this pipe here has access to that infinite source block of water and then we're going to go and take the pump we made earlier. We're going to go place it onto the fluid tank. And then we're going to go take a fluid pipe off of that. And now if we were to add a cog wheel to the mechanical pipe, and then if we were to go and take this hand crank, we can go place the hand crank on there, spin this wheel here. Now, one thing you got to pay attention to, if, see if we can get a better angle on it is these arrows right here. So right now, this water is actually in a pull situation. So any fluid in here is gonna get pulled into this system. So if I go turn that, this is actually pulling water out or pulling resources out of this tank. I don't want that. I'm gonna go shift. It reverses the arrow. This is now pumping water into our tank. Now, if we watch over here, this is not actually not enough power to start our steam engine. What we gotta do is step this up a little bit. So I'm gonna go take that handle back and then I'm gonna take one of the large cog wheels. We're gonna come off of the regular cog wheel and then place a regular cog wheel on the axle of the big cog wheel. And then we're gonna add our hand crank there. And I'll be honest, this is not the best angle to see the arrows because this is something you gotta keep in mind. So from up here, we can see our arrows just barely. I'm gonna go press that. You can see we're now spinning at a quicker speed and that steam engine is now working there. Now, this is all well and good. The problem is this little bit of water that we push in there runs out fairly, fairly quickly. So to make this a self-sustaining system, what we gotta do is connect our steam engine to our mechanical pump and that way we get a continuous load of power constantly pulling water in and creating more energy from the steam pump. Certainly more energy that we can create just from a hand crank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go take this hand crank, let's take this small cog wheel and because we kinda of got a little bit of a space constraint there, we're gonna bump this out one more. We're gonna put the small cog wheel on here. We're gonna put a big cog wheel attached to that. Then we're going to go come back in with another small cog wheel followed by a large cog wheel. And then we're going to go connect that with a shaft as well. Now, when we turn it with the hand crank, keeping an eye on the power gauge, there you go. 
It's now picked up extra speed where the steam pump is creating more power than the mechanical pump is using up. I believe from previous uses of creating that, this is creating about 2000 PSU. I don't remember exactly what the mechanical term was. This is only using about 500 of that. So we've got about 1500 PSU from here and we can add more of these steam engines onto it as long as we've got enough heat and enough water going into it. There is an item that we can create called engineer's goggles that will let us see the stats from this. That's something I probably have to make in another episode. But as a demonstration about how we're going to use this to power some of our other machines, I'm going to go take this handle here and then we're going to go grab our depot. Let's go throw that right here. And that's actually going to be the perfect space for that. We're going to take the mechanical press. We're going to place it against that cog. Oh, and actually the depot is not in the right spot. It should be right there. And then as a demonstration, we're going to take these 19 gold ingots. I'm going to go place them right on a mechanical press. And there you go. It's going to automatically pound all of these uh, gold ingots into the gold plates. And in the future, we can set up conveyor belts and other methods of like moving items into machines like this. So this is exactly what I want. This is going to help us move forward when we build ourselves the crushing wheel, which is going to require a whole bunch of these mechanical crafters and the crushing wheel is going to require its own power. Once we get that done though, with this steam engine, we should be pretty much good to go to automate our whole sort of resource gathering system all the way from the washing to the grinding, the millstone, as well as, you know, any sort of like uh, pounding or the crushing with the crushing wheels and then over into the smelter to smelt everything down into proper ingots. So that's something we're going to be working on shortly, but that's going to be it for this one. Let's jump into our quest book. We're going to go over to the create tab. There you go. Steam engine, random reward. Ooh, diamond destructor hammer. That actually seems pretty cool. Mine's a five by five area. So what we could do really quickly, this is actually going to be too big. Wow. Okay. That is really, really cool. I like that. That is awesome. The roof's a little bit bigger than it should be, but maybe I should be making these roofs a little bit taller, but that's going to be for this one. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll see you guys next time. Good boy.